How's it going? Today we're going to have a look at Apache Pig. We're going to start off by comparing Pig Latin with HiveQL, SQL. After that, we're going to be looking at how to use Pig Latin. Here we have a side-to-side -side comparison of HiveQL SQL with Pig Latin. HiveQL SQL is a declarative language where you say what you want without having to say how to do it. Whereas Pig Latin is a procedural language. Here you have to specify the exact steps to get the results. Here we have a comparison of the same query but in HiveQL SQL and in Pig Latin. As most of you are familiar with SQL, let's have a look at the SQL query in a little bit more detail. So we can see here that we want to select the county name and we want to have a count of the customer IDs. And this count of customer IDs we're going to store in a variable customer count. And we want this from a table called counties. And we're going to join this counties table to another table called customers. And we're going to join on the county IDs in both the counties table and the customers table. And we're looking for a region the southeast. So in the southeast region there'll be a number of counties and we want to group by those counties where the customer ID number is greater than 200 and we're going to then order this in descending order. So this is something that most of you will be familiar with and it's quite um, reasonable to understand this. Whereas with Pig Latin you have to give much more details as to exactly what steps to perform. So we'll have a look at that one by one. So this is our first uh, line that matches with the HiveQL. In HiveQL we want to look at the region southeast. In Pig Latin we're going to filter the counties for the region southeast. The next line then creates our join using the county ID. Here we're going to group by the county names. In this line we're going to count the customer IDs from the county names and now we're going to filter out all the customer IDs that are greater than 200. Here we will place in order the customer IDs in descending order. The final line in Pig Latin, the dump command, will display the results. And the first two lines in Pig Latin load the two tables that we are interested in. We're now going to have a look at some data that we're going to carry out some Pig Latin commands on. This data comes from a file of over 28,000 rows and it gives the ratings for movies and it shows the year of the movie, the length, the budget and what type of movie it is. And we're going to use this to have a look at the different types of commands that we can use in Pig Latin. We can see that the title will be a chart array, year will be an int, length will be an int, budget long, rating float, vote float, R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. They will all be floats. The MPAA will be a chart array. Action will be int as well as animation, comedy, drama, documentary, romance and short. They will all be ints. So from this we can now develop our schema. This is the file here. You can download this from the description down below. So the first thing we need to do is we need to upload this file into HDFS and we also need to then start the Grunt shell. So the first thing we'll do is we will upload this file into HDFS. Notice here that we have to use the put command to take the file from the local file system and to put it 
into the Hadoop file system. We'll open up a, another terminal and we will use this to type in our pig Latin commands. To start the pig shell, just type in pig. And this gives us the grunt shell, the pig shell, the grunt shell, same thing. So we need to load our movies data into pig and we're going to call our relation M. And we can see here that we're indicating that our movies.tab file is a tab separated file. I'll press enter. Yes, I've forgotten to type in the semicolon. So each statement needs to be ended with a semicolon. Now we can use the describe command to describe our relation. So this will describe M and it's telling us that the schema for M is unknown and, and that's because we actually haven't defined a schema for this. So the next thing we need to do is to define a schema for our relation M. We've loaded our data into pig storage. We've defined our schema. Now we can use the describe command as we did previously. We'll create another relation and we'll call that relation A and we'll use the limit command to limit the number of entries from the M relation to 100. 100 is arbitrary. You, you can use any number that you choose. So we can use describe now to have a look at our data which is in relation A. Then we can see here that everything that we've already defined for our relation in M is also in A. A has the same schema as M because A is a subset of the M relation. But to actually view the data, we need to use the dump command. And here we can see the results that the data has been inserted into our relation. Filter is used to get rows that match an expression criteria. So for example, if we wanted to list the movies that have a rating uh, greater than four, we can use the following. And to see our results, we use the dump command. And here you can see that all the ratings that were greater than four, all those records are now shown to us. You can use multiple conditions with filters and Boolean operators such as and, or, not. So for example, we could list the movies that were released between 1965 and 1985. And once again, to see the results, we use the dump command. If we wanted to store these results in a file, we can use the store command, which will output the relation to a new file in the Hadoop file system. Once the command has stopped running, you need to go to another shell, terminal, go to another terminal, and you need to use the git command to get the directory output from HDFS onto the local file system. And now we can check the local file system uh, for this output directory. So we'll use the ls command. We can see that output is there. So we will go into the output directory. 
and we can see there that there is a directory called date so we'll go into date and we can see that there are two files there the file that we are interested in the file that has the data is the part file and so we're going to use uh, we'll use less because it's going to be a big big file and we can see all the data is there to view the step-by-step -step execution of a sequence of statements we can use the illustrate command so we'll do that next so what this command shows us is this step-by-step -step sequence in which this command was initiated the for each command gives a simple way to apply transformations based on columns so if we wanted to list the movie names and the, and the duration of the movie in minutes we can use for each and to check the results we use the dump command And we can see here from the results the list of all the movies and <coughs> their duration in minutes. The group keyword is used to group fields in a relation. Group by relations are used to work with aggregation functions on the group data. So as an example, we could list the years and the number of movies released each year. To check the results, we use the dump command. Now that didn't make much sense. So it's a good idea, especially when you have so much data, to actually limit the results. So that's what we'll do. We will do a dump to see the results. Now this makes a little bit more sense. We can see that there's one film that corresponds to 1893 and there are six films that correspond for 1894. And you can check the data as you go along. Let's try another group by query and then let's see what results it gives us. So we're grouping the movies by rating and by length and we'll check the results using the uh, dump command and we'll check the results using the dump command but before we do that we're going to limit our results otherwise it just becomes difficult to understand what the results are giving us Let's try another group by command. Well, group by rating and length of a movie. Now, before we dump our results, we'll limit them. And now we can dump our results. And we can see here our results where the rating and the length of a film is given. In addition to these commands that we've seen there are numerous other commands but those that will be useful are aggregation functions such as these and I would suggest that you have a go and try these aggregation functions out. If you get stuck leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer your question but in the meantime what we'll do is we'll try one of these aggregation functions just to give you an idea that they're actually quite easy to use. And we can see here the results. We've done a count for each of the years, how many movies there were for each of the years. Try out these aggregation functions and see how you get on. If you found this video useful, then please subscribe. And I'd really be interested to see how you've got on with the aggregation functions and with pig in general. So just leave a comment at the bottom. And until next time, thank you.